Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is May 1st, 2013, and um, and I, I, when I look back at this, I'm always um, wondering why I was laughing when I start the introduction, but it's because we probably said something weird right before that, but not too weird. Anyway, so um, we um, have a couple of, um, have had some pretty scheduled kinds of things, and then these big MOOCs happening all over the place, and so... I thought, what if we just take a week and just talk to each other mm, and cool. be small? <laughs> so, so um, we are a group of, of teachers. Welcome, Monica. We're just Hi, starting Monica. to introduce. Um, so why don't each of you introduce yourselves? Monica, and I've, I've set this show up. I love MOOCs, too, but I also love small. So um, I'm really happy to have a small, comfortable kind of... Um, what's up with you conversation. So thank the four of you for coming and doing that with me and uh, anybody else who might arrive. Um, so uh, why don't we start over on the one side. Chad, do you want to introduce yourself and and uh, just sure. brief introductions and then we'll go around. All right. Hey there. Um, my name is Chad Sansing and I teach project-based learning and language arts at a little arts-infused and literacy-focused Charter Middle School in Virginia, one of uh, just four charter schools in that state, very kind of grassroots school. And this spring we are kind of hurtling towards the finish line and testing season, trying to get some making and composing finished and, uh, and all kinds of different media. And that's, you teach mainly in eighth grade or other grades too? I've got six, seven, and eight. You have between, one. yeah. Very cool. Joe? Uh, Joe Baraiso. I teach uh, 11th, 12th grade English at Fremont High in Oakland. Um, and let's see. Yeah, it definitely is. We're just getting into testing season, so everybody's in testing season mode right now. Which is when does that start? Actually, though? next week, Monday. Wow. Mm -hmm. So yes. Do you get um, Do you get a little time after the season for other things? After the test, is there more any time left? There's time. Yeah. Uh, how how useful it is, um, or how <laughs> people approach it is different. Um, but no, there's time for uh, for folks. But yeah, so that's where it's at. At this, so we had a lot of people let go. Um, we're hoping to hear that some come back. We're just we're in the same place as a lot of other awesomely semi-functioning high schools. So so yeah. They were let go for next year or this year already. Uh, they were let go for this year, um, mm -hmm. and again, waiting to hear if we get money so that we can have them back, or I don't know, have a building, have a real football field, something, anything. So, so yeah, everyone's kind of really tired at my school. Um, it's hard to find a lot of people that are very hopeful right now. So, cool. so yeah. Looking well, thank you for joining us. At least, yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, great, Monica. Hi. Hey, Joe, where did you say you're from? Uh, Oakland. My mama, but I'm also in Oakland. Okay. <laughs> so I'm in Loveland, Colorado, and um, just been had the privilege and opportunity to be experimenting um, with kids and the intersection of city and school the last four or five years. Nice. Cool. And I'm Paul Olson, and I teach at Bronx Academy Senior High, which will be no longer after mm -hmm. June. So um, I'm having fun going around the city, getting to know different kinds of schools in different places. So that's uh, part of what I'm up to. And uh, Richard, are you there? Okay. Richard was one of the guys who was going to come on. And it might be his first time, so we'll see what happens. So, Valerie, welcome. Hey, how are you? So I'm an English language arts teacher. Richard's in the chat box. He says, yes, I am. So I don't know if he can't work the mic. Um, yeah. So I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana. I have AP Lit, English 3, and English 4. And I imagine, yes, we're all just a little bit tired, Joe. Yeah, just a little. 
But it's awesome. Education's great. Totally. We're, te <laughs> we're teachers and we love it. Yeah. Jesus, I agree. <laughs> what is this about? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just said peace, and then she translated my peace to deuces. I see. So it, it's okay. It, it's a language. We understand it. It's all yes. good. Ball. <laughs> it's all good. We're friends. Hard to. <laughs> Sorry, okay, we'll stop. Right, we'll stop right. being. We'll stop being. So, <laughs> and we're trying. And, 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 yeah, anyway, I don't know what to tell Richard. He'll, he'll try to figure it out, I guess. Um, so so um, how do we get started here? One one of the one of the ideas I've I've uh, had is just to get this started is to mention four areas that uh, Monica has talked about in the past um, for 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 students but also ourselves kind of it's I don't think you suggested Monica for um, conversations but um, but to to have a conversation with yourself on a regular maybe daily basis um, thinking about four things. Um, and I'll try to repeat them, and then Monica, you can say whatever you're thinking about those four things here in a second. But and and then we'll just jump into them. Um, one is, um, what are you um, noticing um, right now? And uh, another is, what 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 are you dreaming? And what kind of dreams are you trying to put into action? Perhaps, um, what are you connecting to? Uh, both people and ideas. And then, um, what are you doing? I like this one. What are you doing? That's awesome. Um, and uh, so that's my take on those four things. And I, I don't think we have to keep them in any particular order. But if you want to kind of keep those in mind as we're, as we're talking and remind each other to talk toward those, I think that might be one really wildly open structure here, if we could do that. Monica, do you have anything to add to that or thoughts? Sure. Um, just a little, well, mm -hmm. a little back history, but something that just now happened. Someone just, a friend just posted an article on Facebook about the 10 tech things that you should no longer put on your resume because they're outdated. And within the article, um, it said the only, you know, and the new things that are coming don't get stuck on those either. And it, it said mm -hmm. the only thing that's going to be around for sure is knowing how to learn. And so that's really where the Notice Dream Connect do came to be while we were looking for what is the process of learning how to learn, you know. So we went and researched self-directed learners, you know, and how do, how do you do that? And we believe it's a natural process, and the words don't mean anything, and we didn't come up with anything new. We just found some things out, and the kids kind of came up with words they thought would be useful and handy and memorable to them. So that's where it came from. Um, I add one more thing. Um, we worked with Jim Folkstead at um, Colorado State University um, on this. It was, you know, youth participatory action research, and um, we were together, just he and I, you know, pruning out some things. And he said something was really missing. You know, we had Notice Dream Connect do, and he said it's B. And so we really do think there's five parts. And you're you're right, um, Paul. There's no order, and it's not even that you have to do it. It's just if you're stuck, you're you're not in the right. natural mode of curiosity anymore for some reason, and you need to help yourself get back out. That's so. Great. Thanks for that background. So who wants to jump in? Tell us what you've been noticing, dreaming, doing, being. <laughs> All righty then. I'll go next. <laughs> Thanks, Valerie. You're welcome. <laughs> um, in the TTT chat box, I was just saying that I've noticed daydreams, not any major big dreams the kids are having. Um, just daydreams. Um, I had the Art Institute contact me last month to come in and do a presentation about, you know, what are you going to do after high school, blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. So, again, my population is 11th and 12th grade.
graders and the majority really are 12th graders so I figured it'd be kind of cool I like the Art Institute commercials to be honest I knew their presentation would be something slick and interesting it would keep their attention and then I could do some writing assignments about you know where do you see yourself 10 years from now that sort of thing my mind was literally blown away when the woman came in and she really is coming in at the end of March she does her presentation she talks about the different pathways you can take in the Art Institute you can do food service you can, or food creation or artwork or you could do graphics on computers or whatever so she had like 15 different angles the kids could take and some of my kids sat there they were wowed they were like this is really interesting maybe I'll try that and I'm looking around thinking y'all are leaving next month and now you're starting to think about what it is you might want to do when you graduate and that was really an eye-opening experience for me that they know they're graduating and they're leaving but they really have no idea about <laughs> what's going on or what to do so a lot of them signed her little brochure you know turn in this postcard we'll contact you let us know you you want to do I had a couple of them saying well I've gotten like I've got like lots of offers from different schools and the, the woman the presenter looked at me and she's like well that's really cool and I said it is but and I leaned in close I said you gotta really listen to them I said follow along and I turned to the kid and I said how many schools have you applied to he said well one but I've got like lots of different offers <laughs> but it's like well baby how many applications have you actually turned in well one but I've got like lots of different choices and you know the woman looked at me and I looked at her and I said obviously you need to come back next year but you need to do this to my 10th and 11th graders so that we can get the wheels turning so that you know by the time their 11th grade year wraps up they've got some idea about dreams and ideas and future and placement and you know it was just a real eye-opening experience for me that they had no idea that their graduation was coming up real soon and that they actually had to do something you know hmm. but that's me um, yeah I'm just, uh, anybody have responses, thoughts about that? Um, I, yeah. I wanted to respond, I think, to both Val and um, Valerie and Monica, because um, I teach 12th graders also, so seeing how, okay, let me speak to what Monica said, because then it, it goes right into what Valerie, uh, response to Valerie, is, Monica, you had said that talking about, if, trying to think about how people learn about or what you're learning about how people learn and and I think that helped me kind of talk uh, figure out then I guess what I'm noticing and what I'm dreaming about and what I'm noticing about this year is that all the encounters people encounters um, that I've had a lot more people um, and not just physically but just but virtually and I think that's been really cool um, and then how that's actually made me feel so like how I wanted to keep learning so there's a lot of new things this year that uh, I wanted to try and because I guess people were giving me the tools and the support I ended up trying them and no one's saying nay about trying anything right now um, I mean I get hit with a lot of challenges but it's they're fun to solve because I actually enjoy like all of the digital work with my students right, right now and then with them and I what I like seeing is is the difference between my seniors and my juniors is is when they see their work published and that's something they've never done before and then they see they get excited like Paul with the logo like they got super juiced about getting seeing their logo live um, they started to see results like I was seeing results and so now they're at this point and I'm hopeful for them as seniors next year. So, Valerie, they actually are maybe more aware that there's another world out there and what they could possibly do with it. Is I guess I, I'm seeing I'm just seeing my myself getting like out. I guess working with other teachers and then also them see my students now benefiting and they get to see their work 
and people responding to them. And I think that, that this makes the learning part, um, it's very validating, but it's just it, they, they, they feel that people are interested. Like that what they say right now, what they're thinking about, what they're dreaming, what they're noticing, people are, they actually do care. And if we, you know, the right tools are there and the, and the medium is there, the, you know, the web, whatever, that they actually, they learn a lot. Um, and so I feel like right now I'm hopeful and dreaming that next year that I don't want what I've been going through, this feeling of, of, of being able to take risks and it's cool and trying new things and it's fine and I mess up and it's okay, no one's like tripping. Um, I'm kind of like, dude, what can I do with this next year? I don't know. It's going to go crazy. I, I'm going to just see how far somebody goes until someone stops me, I guess. Because you got, a bunch of, you got a bunch of 11th graders on a good start. Is what, yeah. Is what those are the, yeah the so how does that compare to your 12th graders, though? Or My 12th grade? graders, I love them dearly. But, you know, talk about, and I'm going to say it, this is, this is the, a very highly skilled class in so many ways. They're really good critical thinkers, they're great community kids, they have a good good relationship with each other. They, mo for the most part, have absolutely no idea what they're doing the day after graduation. Um, there were so many rejection letters from college, they, they applied, so they did, Valerie, they did apply, right. and then uh, they didn't know what they were applying for, they didn't right. realize that how much they were missing when they got to senior year, and that's, you know, all of the stakeholders in the game, we're all to, to be responsible for that, fine. But it's really, it's really interesting to see how much um, they're okay with not knowing what's going I don't think the reality check has hit them yet. It's just not hitting them. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not really sure what's going to happen to so many of them, like when the festivities are over, for half of them if they make it to the festivities on graduation. And then the difference with my juniors is that because I get to have them for a couple of years, this is a cool thing, then it's, um, I, they're learning, I'm telling them everything that's happening with the seniors right now. And, and they're absorbing it, like they believe it, um, which, is, which is nice right now. So I, I do look forward to, to them for next year. Um, yeah, cool. that's where it's at. Chad, Monica, any thoughts about? Yeah, I um, so I've looped with my eighth graders for uh, most of them at least two years, and many of them for three years, depending whether or not they join our school in sixth grade or, or seventh grade. And they're they're kind of on I don't want to say the other side of the spectrum, but they have a unique awareness of themselves as being in a school that they chose to come to, or that their families chose for them to come to especially because we're co-located inside of a larger traditional school. Mm -hmm. And the eighth graders have spent, I don't know, the last few months having these conversations and going through these things. Our, our division has somewhat of a portfolio of choices for them in that it has a uh, Glasser Quality School, Charter High School. There's a Math, Engineering, and Science Academy at one high school. There's a new... Um, Health Sciences Academy opening another high school, and there's a regional um, wonderful uh, career and technical education center that students can go to part-time and earn industry certifications and things. So the students have been, I think, made aware of educational choice because they've been in our school, and they're thinking purposefully about where they want to go next year and who's going where, of course, um, but what each program really has to offer them and where they want to go, where their parents think they'd be best served. So it's interesting hearing about the conversations the seniors are having or not having and looking at, at these kids and just thinking about what nudged them in that direction. You know, is it as simple as giving them some choices earlier on in their, um, in, you know, their educational pipeline so they become somewhat acclimated to looking around and wondering about what they're doing next year from sometime in middle school on up. I don't know. Um, but in terms of what I'm noticing, I've started writing about this a little bit. I'm kind of fascinated by how much kids are, have made this year and how much they're continuing to make going into spring and staying engaged with some of the projects. Not all, but some of them. And they've moved in our time together, and I think I've followed them. They've moved from being very kind of commercial gamers to using games to learn, to using games to make things, to just making things. And I think that's a really great progression because it kind of gives me hope 
that in a Douglas Rushkoff sense of the world where there are people who don't know rules exist, people who know the rules exist, people who take advantage of rules, and people who write the rules, that these kids are finding ways to change groups and to kind of move, move upwards towards being agents and writing the rules in their own education, or at least in choosing to make things to show their learning in class that I don't necessarily assign, but that they come up with. I just think that's great that um, when I listen to Rushkoff, I get all fired up because I'm like, oh, the, you know, here are these categories, and we want, we want to change that in the next go-around of society. But I think my kids are showing me that they can um, move between those things and kind of learn their way through them, and I find that really heartening. If, if somebody wanted to follow up on that source, how could they do that? Uh, so uh, Rushkoff has, a, I think, a, a book, Program or Be Programmed might have been the book, but there's a five-minute five minute clip on YouTube from South by Southwest 2010 where he kind of lays out his argument from, you know, the advent of text to printing press to Internet and what it's done for society and how these kinds of groupings of people who use the technology or, in his words, are used by the technology um, haven't but these groups have always been there, regardless of the technology. And how do you change that kind of grouping rather than just the technology? Hmm. So can I play moderator for a second and ask you to tell us a little more details? Like uh, give us a snapshot of one or two students or something as they move yeah, between those groups? I, I, sure. Some specifics, so, yeah. yeah. Um, two years ago... I, might have, I was teaching a U.S. History 1 course to some of these kids, and Minecraft was really taking off at our school. So we'd boot it up, and we'd go through games and keep, like, let's say, Explorer's Journal. So we'd just play the games, but we'd talk about, in terms of exploration, um, what would you notice, what would you write home about, what geographical or geological features or natural resources would you look for for a place to settle, if it was just you, if it was a larger group of people. You know, you it's all game. in Minecraft? Mm, yeah, well, the, the playing would be in Minecraft, and the discovering would be in Minecraft of these procedurally generated worlds per kid. And then, you know, the writing would be, like, in a journal, like an explorer's journal in class. So there'd be a material piece. Last year, the kids were... So last year, we moved on, and in, in, in the way... Because we have one kind of teacher per subject area, or have had that historically, our social studies courses are, sometimes get a little jumbled, so instead of doing... U.S. History 2 last year, we did civics and economics. And so students in that class would start thinking about, what are ways I can use Minecraft to show the things we're talking about? So after I saw you, like, in San Francisco last year, I went home and I was like, hey, guys, I was really struck by the art and the homelessness. Uh, we live in a town with a lot of art, and we live in a town with a homelessness issue that a lot of people are working on. Do we want to do anything with this in terms of citizenship, since that's what we're studying? And then those kids in that particular group elected to build a model of our downtown pedestrian mall, which has a free speech wall. It's a giant chalkboard anyone can go and write on. And they recreated that and took their research about our local uh, homelessness problem and put that research on signs onto that free speech wall in the game. And they did it together on a server so that when we have expo nights, they can run the server and whoever comes to see all the kids work can kind of play in their server, go through their town, and see both their modeling of, of downtown, but also their research on that wall. So it's then, game, at, game as city. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, you know, this year, those students are all doing different things, and I have some of them for language arts, and I have some of them in project-based learning, but, you know, this year they're attacking different projects and on DIY.org, which has kind of skill trees for student kid makers to go through. Some of them are trying to learn the principles of flight by making their own gliders, some of them are using uh, Arduinos to figure out how circuitry works and everything from the video game controllers they use to, you know, just play basic coding, hello world kind of stuff. Uh, it's, it's, there's like a bigger uh, techno diversity of work going on, but not just technical, also material. And it's in new media, it's in cardboard and hot glue. Uh, we just got some conductive paint that we've been messing around with. It's, uh, it's just diverse, and it's all stuff students are thinking about making or they're following steps to learn different tools, different ways to wire things, different ways to program things so that they can eventually get to a point where they can be creative with those tools. And 
very seldom does anybody go back to Minecraft, and when they do, they take advantage of either the redstone in the game, which is circuitry that you can use to make mechanisms, or they've updated the game with um, command blocks. So you could essentially write a program out of blocks in the game now. And so some kids have just begun exploring, like, how could I make a game in Minecraft using the command blocks to program that game? Wow. That's just we, like my class. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not. <laughs> well, but but there's, there are a lot of connections there. The kids believe in what they're doing. There's, mm -hmm. uh, for the students who I've had for a while now, you know, they know there's a process of designing at the beginning and writing a plan and thinking about where they're going to go, how they're going to start, where they'll go for help, when they know they'll be done. And then there's this afterwards process of reflection, which sometimes also involves kind of coding a, a little bit of a web portfolio page to, to show off the work and house both uh, a photo of the work or an embedded copy of the work and a uh, written reflection. Mm -hmm. And that's, for, that, that's hopefully for all kids at some point, uh, but not necessarily always for all kids at every point. What what is the the uh, the web page? You know the the whole process. So some kids who the are, whole process. Yeah, and I think my most resistant writers. I'm less likely to have them plan, and I'm more likely to let them use trial and error, and then get them hooked into explaining themselves in a reflection afterwards, than to try to push the writing up front, and then eventually they come to see why they might want to plan, and then getting them to write a plan is much easier. So seriously, Chad, this doesn't sound like any classroom I've ever seen before. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's a process of discovery. Each day it's unlike any classroom I've ever seen before. Mm -hmm. um, we've had kids like do stencil art in the past, and then last week mysteriously in my room, I guess out of equity because other middle schools have these things, a, um, like a, I don't even know what to call it. It's called a silhouette. It's a, a thing, it's a printer that has a knife. And it cuts out stencils for you, uh -huh. but you can you can also do designs so that it cuts out paper in such a way that when you pop it off the mat, you can crinkle it accordion and it'll become you know like a pop up. So it's just like as we do stuff, we see opportunities to do other things, and then sometimes boxes arrive in our room and we <laughs> we do stuff with them. Be right there. Sorry, no problem. <laughs> Good. And it's just the reading and the writing. Um, in my most traditional class right now. We're actually using a great resource on digital is, and this is a 6-7 language arts class, and I will pop it into the chat. Let's see. But I saw this, and we had some of the stuff for it, so I said, why not? And um, we do morphology in there. So we study Greek and Latin roots, and we were looking at um, cyber, the idea of steering something and humans being in control of technology. And uh, this book came along, this bookmaking process on digital is, where kids made a little book, physical book, folded paper, drew circuits on it and graphite, which is conductive enough to work with something called a, um, a makey-makey board, which essentially sits between a computer and anything you attach to it that's conductive and translates your touches and the conductivity into commands for the computer. So they're going to make these books with these pencil-drawn circuits about cyberpunks committing cybercrimes and hacking and, and things like this, you know, letting their, I don't know, there, there are people using microwaves to fight, like, mice who are stealing cheese. It's, it's wild. But they're going to eventually record their stuff in Scratch and um, just program it so that with these different key buttons, Scratch plays the narration for different pages in their story, and they'll actually control that program in the recording by touching the circuits in their in the physical book that's outside the computer. Whoa. It's pretty it's neat. It's on um, digital right. is. It was done with elementary kids. We're doing it with middle school kids. And it's the kind of thing where you, you know, my whole thing is <laughs> kind of, hey, this looks kind of cool. Let's see what we can do in five minutes. Would you like to do more with it? Here's a couple more class periods. And so it's it's going pretty well in that class and I have a couple of kids other places messing around with it. All right, so that's been uh, amazing that description. I, I think um, so, but I, I want to kind of, I want to kind of think about a little bit about the conditions. Which you've said, some of it is that you've been with these kids um, for two years or longer. Three, two to three years for the eighth graders, uh, mostly two years for the seventh graders, and then I have some kids who are new to me this year. So that the kind of transformation that you talked about earlier of being a gamer to mm -hmm. 
what was it? To making things in games or making games. things in games, and then what? Making your own game. <laughs> making, making your own things. Just making things, really. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. That 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 takes time. Would, would, Definitely. The 7th graders have gone at it kind of faster than the 8th graders. I think maybe just because they, as 6th graders last year, watched those kids and worked with them some. And I probably had a little bit more of an idea of how to help them along having <laughs> been doing this for longer than with that first, not the first class of the school, but the first class that's really worked this way. So, yeah, we do have looping. We have small class sizes. Um, and we're really set up for kind of three profiles of kids um, that amazingly when given the freedom to kind of negotiate their learning do a really nice job together. It's you know, So that's kids, another condition, the, the yeah. smallness, but also that you, you're, they're negotiating their own learning. Yeah, I, th I think that's, that's huge and none of it happens, you're right, none of it happens right away and there are things you never get rid of like good lessons or good lessons and direct instruction just at the right time on a piece of vocabulary or a place to go is always going to be necessary and for some kids it takes you know more than a year to trust the process or to write a really good plan and so you just go with it because you just, you just trust it I don't know, I trust it mm -hmm. I want to get back, Joe back in the conversation at least and everybody but Joe, you're you're involved with um, a civics project, right? Um, at in Oakland, and and one of your hopes is the kids will go out and do things in the community or for the community in some way. Um, That's my hope. But and I'm just wondering. I, I don't. I hope I'm like not making too big a stretch here. But you do have the looping a little bit, and mm -hmm. and I'm wondering if you're seeing similar kinds of changes with kids being more empowered and then thinking about what to do with that power? I, yeah. That's a bad summary, but go ahead. No, 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 no. That's, an ac that's accurate. So um, I have both. I have both. So I do have kids that are, I think because I, I also have a good, one of my conditions is that I have a really strong uh, architecture and design teacher who mm -hmm. is teaching a skill set in a separate class, the kids are learning drafting, the kids are learning Photoshop, they're learning a lot of the tools. So the fear part, the like fear factor of trying something and, and, and posting it, they, um, for many of them, um, it's, not, it's not too much of a stretch. And, and he's the teacher in that class, you know, as time goes on, he gets better at his craft as well. So yeah, I am seeing that a lot of them are, um, I can I can see where in in a in a couple of years they're when I they're gonna be I'm gonna be talking about them differently than I have talked about my current seniors. And why do you th why do you think? Because well, like Chad said, it's like you know you get better at your you just get better yourself at at doing and delivery and and and, and talking about and figuring out which ones were the mm -hmm. best lessons. And so they're getting my best. They're getting my best. Uh, Everything I've learned about, especially about digital lit from the last five years, I've poured it into them. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I'm really, that's why I'm like, I need to learn a lot more for next year because they're ready for it. Um, I don't know what that's going to look like. So, oh, and then this year, this summer, so what I'm doing with them is because of what I've noticed with the 12th graders this year and, and just the past few years, I don't know, eight years being a senior advisor. Um, I'm offering them a cyber class, an online class this summer that because many of them for credit recovery, many of them are going to go to continuation school at this point. They're not going to graduate on time. So my hope was whether or not any they, they leave our school for their senior year or they stay with me and they loop with me. I want to capitalize on this summer. Um, I, I want them to do, uh, they're going to basically be taking an online you know, credit recovery English class, and I get to turn mm -hmm. that into whatever I want. So when we talk about civic engagement, the opportunity for them to do things online. Um, go ahead, babe. Um, I don't know. I, I'm kind of. I want to be able to see what I can do with them, because and see what they could do themselves. Because I'm not going to have a physical classroom with them over the summer. It's all. The criteria was just have a 
a, con a connection to the internet and be willing to move around the city that you live in, since so many of them don't want to leave the city of Oakland. Um, I might as well. Cool. I. Yeah. You know, Youth Voices is open, by the way. So yeah, whatever thanks. they end up doing, they should throw it up. They should there. just be posting. But, yeah. But we could. Um. And and what we one and. I hope you're going to find out about this in a couple of weeks, but um, we're, we're actually going to be doing some fundraising to try to get a summer class together of cool. young folks. Um, and um, so the um, and and writing projects around the country have these youth camps. So we want to kind of uh, try to figure out how to help those folks connect um, okay. in some way, if it if it makes sense. So. And it, we're always run out of time to get all this stuff, but we're going to try to do some of it. <laughs> so that, that's that's some of the thinking. I, I, you know, I, I let me just mention and then and then throw it open to other conversations. What, I, I, uh, what I've been noticing and what I've been interested in, after talking with um, Fred Midland and um, Ed, um, <laughs> the artist from last week. Um, is this notion, and I'm interested, um, Chad, in, in what your kids are doing in this, this notion of, of big projects and um, and little projects and how and how all that fits together. And and so one of the th one of the ways Fred says it in a very positive way is is that instead of making these, you know, these make you make little tiny things. I'm <laughs> sorry to use that word, but you know um, that are just kind of experiments. The kids are making something that becomes um, a part of a, a larger thing that gets put up in the public, and and, and you know it's it, it's a large project. And 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 I've I've sort of been noticing the the project that I've been so fascinated by is this. Um, nest box project with 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 my kids and they're making these nest boxes and they're learning about birds and 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 doing really wonderful things around nature and being out on the Bronx River and understanding um, their community in in deep ways um, through the environment um, but it, it was you know no kid ever came to me and said I'd like to make nest boxes and learn about tree swallows you know the um, but but they're they're totally um, jazzed by it I mean and kids that you wouldn't think would be um, but because that they see the boxes go up and they see that there were the three that went up last year and so this connection to an ongoing project is an interesting kind of a piece of it, and they can find their way in in some way. So that's one of the questions I've been asking, um, trying to figure out how to give room for little messy around experiments and the big projects too. And I kind of think that when I think about Oakland, I'm wondering how you guys are dealing with that kind of question too. Does that make some sense? And Valerie, jump back in and <laughs> Monica, of course, um, at, at any point. Monica, last week I, I asked you at the end if you had lots of thoughts, and you had all these thoughts, so please interrupt us <laughs> as we go. So who wants to speak next? <laughs> I'll call on you. If you... <laughs> that's that's, what that's you easier, think? man. That's easier. There you go. Um, I, I, I've already said from day one, Paul, I fell in love with youth voices and the curriculum sheet that you set up years and years and years and years and years ago and I think it's still my goal to make that the backbone and template for the class which means they do the work that they have to do for me and the parish and the state and park and ACT and GEE or I leap or whatever. It's amazing. It is. <laughs> um, and then you're evaluated <laughs> with a whole another set of things. But go ahead. Yes. Okay. Crazy. So, um, for me to find a way to fold it, and I really have been doing that. So I really am ready for again next year to break open the doors and be like Joe and wait for somebody to tap on my shoulder and say, well, no, you can't do that because I'm really going to see how much I can get done. Um, 
to use that as the template to allow them to research on their own independently the small issues and the small projects and the questions that you know they're interested in personally so I'm gonna take a personal investigation angle in addition to the larger focus of you know American literature or British literature or whatever I've got to do for PARC or GEE or EOC or whatever the acronym is and find a way to fold it in all together so I'm mindful of the fact that yes I'm gonna have small projects running at the same time I'm gonna have larger projects um, I think my focus is this year that I'm gonna give them everything I know about whatever topic it is so if we're doing the romantic period in American literature I want them to get every single link and resource and suggested novel and whatever it is I can give them up front and then as a group we're gonna work our way we're gonna find our find out for ourselves what we liked the best, what we didn't like, if we could do this again, what would we do differently sort of thing. So we're going to plow through the information um, together after I share with them all of the resources that I think they could use. And, you know, in the meantime, though, they're on their cell phones or their home computers or whatever others, and they're investigating the small questions that they may have in life, like, how do I really feel about the death penalty? Am I really for it? Am I really against it? That's what are some of the one? things? I just threw, I, that was the only one that just jumped into No, that's mind. cool. No, when you, said, honest, when you said small, I just had a kid finish a project on what, uh, uh, questioning faith healing. And I'm like, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> it's like, small that's project. Not small at all. You know? <laughs> yeah. So no. I just, I'm hoping that, um, I just know we need to make this, their learning process more important to them so that they see value in it. Because right now, I'll be really honest, I'm pissed off that in 2013, my kids are now numbers, their grades, their scores. You know, they're not kids anymore they're not future doctors or future lawyers or future plumbers you know they're either a 695 for a fair or a good or an excellent and that just really drives me crazy and I've got to find a way to do whatever needs to be done to keep my job yet I educate kids so I have to feel good educating kids, you know, teaching them left and right or up or down or brown or blue or whatever your interest is. We need to investigate it because if not, then it doesn't make any sense for me to really come to work day after day and fight to teach the kids the test. You know, I don't teach the test. I teach kids. So I, I, my goal really is to use the Youth Voices template to allow them to do, you know, their researching, do my researching, and uh, we can plug up the skills that are necessary for them to get the advanced and the excellence and the goods that they need to get on our mandated state tests. Okay, I'm off my soapbox now. No, no, that, that was good. That was fun. I'm sorry. Can I get on mine? Yes. Yep, go on. <laughs> cool. Um, well, I guess that's why. <laughs> um, I guess that's why I, I'm really looking at at this summer class, this cyber class, as my messy space. So mm -hmm. I don't get paid for it. Yeah, I like that. Um, I'm not. There's no. There's no pay. You don't get paid for it. What? I'm not gonna. And I'm opting. You know what I'm saying. You why, know what? Forget why is it. it only? Why is it only K to twelve teachers who don't get paid for doing online work? I don't. But I sorry. Don't. Are you surprised? <laughs> No, but but right. part of it's you know part of it's that I get to do and then I get to kind of do whatever I want. Okay, you it's know, your messy is, space. Yeah, go ahead. It's, it's my messy space. So, but also with the kids in the looping part, you know, I see them again in September, and then it's a different ball game because then you're right, Valerie. We get hit with all of the every acronym based assessment at that point. Hmm. I'm looking at July and August as being those two months of. I get to talk to them as human beings more than I did this year 
Um, but I get to just, it's a different time for them. It's summertime. It's, it's, I'm taking advantage of the fact that they are more relaxed in the summer. And then they get bored. So I've got, I've got winning conditions right now. <laughs> Um, because I know they don't want to, the option is you can take my class or you can go to Oakland Unified Summer School and go to theirs. And I have, you know, a lot of kids that opted for the, the misty <laughs> option at this point. And so now I have a population to serve, but I can do it. I can teach to the kid. I can teach to the kid for two months because it's my call on, on what I get to do. And, you know, I, I get to do the civic and get, I get to practice the civic engagement work that, that I've been in. And, and that's the thing. This year with the civic engagement work for Oakland Unified, I, I am, it's, it's, it's been a blessing because I, get, I am hopeful about the district um, going in the right direction uh, and, and, and getting the right people to uh, be in, that, in those positions. And, and they're supportive of, of everything this year. And so now they're supportive of this, this summer being able to do that with the kids. And so now I kind of, I'm, kind of, uh, I'm a little bit anxious. Yeah, I was, curious, I was curious about how you got permission to do that. That's pretty cool. Because if you're, because if you're willing to offer our students independent study, uh -huh. then, then that's the, the goal is that the kids can just be more, they can, they can be able to graduate for so many. But that to me just also feels, okay, so I, you can just offer them a BS class. They show up. They, they take tests. They don't pass. It doesn't matter if they pass or not. They were present. Then they get to get... Go ahead, Zia. Then go ahead and get your your grade. I, and I'm after all of this year with them to to let them to, you know to use an Oakland term to let them go dumb for two months and just kind of party it up. Okay, that's great. But also there's going to be those spaces. Party it up. That's the New York term. Okay. Oh, so I, I like to blend. <laughs> okay, um, got it. <laughs> so um, I'm kind of now I'm at trying to ask the same people that have been helping me this year at the district, you know, our civic engagement specialists, all of them, I'm trying, uh, uh, what can I do with the students for two months? Online, hangout meetings like this for discussions, and what can mm -hmm. I do? Yeah, so nice. now I'm kind of, I'm writing everything down. That's where, I, that's where I'm staying juiced for this whole, the rest of the next six weeks of school that we're doing, right. because, yeah. We definitely should keep talking about this. Yeah. Um, I, need some, to... I need some guidance and reins at this point. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, like the, I like that it's messy. Chad, I had a hard question for you. Um, I just came from I just came from a, a coffee conversation, not a real interview yet, right? Oh. And the guy asked me. He said, "Oh, all that inquiry stuff and all that research." And all, I hope you, he he will watch this. One. It's okay. Um, it's, it's all right. <laughs> but love it. Where, he asked me to talk about a weakness, and here I said, "Well, you know what? Here's what I'm. Here's what I I'm not very comfortable in a room anymore where there's not a computer." He said, "What do you mean?" And I said, "Well, it's because it's because it's like I don't want to be the source of the information. You know, I want to be the coach sitting next to the kid, getting the information from another place." Um, and so, and so, and and then, and then he asked about literature. So I want to ask you about literature. So here's here's my question to you on this. So where does literature fit with all that amazing stuff you were describing there? Sure, like <laughs> it's like you know, the other pieces almost. I think in my most traditional classes there's a lot of informational text, especially about art that we look at and we practice things phrased in the way the state would like us to. But then we'll do performance assessments where we like emulate art in that style and then that becomes what we use to decorate the room. Um, and we'll do you know, I'll try out some book groups, I'll try out this, that, or the other thing, but I really try to follow the kids where they're going, especially early on, to build up trust, because by the time we're done together, um, the, the hope is, if things work out right, they're much more willing to listen to me and to, like, hear out my pitches for things. So I've got a bunch of eighth graders who are doing, you know, independent reading things, and are like, oh, you might like this, you might like that. And they're picking up great books, some of which are informational, some of which are canonical, some of which are canonical science fiction, if that counts as canonical. <laughs> you know, like, um, they're from all over the place. But if they're reading and thinking, like, I, I trust that what they're doing is going to help them wherever they go. And I trust that the 
best way to kind of help them and to get them to think that our room is a safe place for that kind of stuff is to uh, make it as much about them as anything else. So I don't, you know, I don't, uh, in the absence of being told what to teach or being handed a reading list and in the mm -hmm. presence of having a charter that lets me adopt curricular materials on the fly, I try to put things in front of my students, whether it's literature or not, that they'll be thrilled to read. And sometimes my bets pay off, sometimes they don't. <laughs> sometimes we're not ready to listen to each other yet. But, you know, maybe it, it, that, that's a weakness and a strength at once, right? Like, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't go to the box of A Wrinkle in Time and pull out a class set anymore or whatever. It's not, it's not really how, I wouldn't say it's not how I operate, it's not how we operate. Had you ever done that? Oh, sure. Like, uh -huh. yeah, man. So this feels different to you. Yeah, it does. I, I mean, because I, I, I think we need to start saying that the, the sort of the, the, the discipline, the, the, you know, has changed if we're doing all this other stuff. Yeah, well, I, I think so, but also some, I don't know, some of the kids, you know, you don't have to get like a makey makey or an Arduino in my room and, you know, use cold solder and develop robots and stuff like that. If you want to be the kid who goes up on the window ledge and reads all class period, and then, you know, a couple of times a week you come down and we talk about your questions, we find somebody else who's reading the same thing, that's great. That's, yeah. that's, that's yeah. wonderful. Let's plan it, let's do it, let's reflect on it. Um, so, just to pull Joe back in the conversation again, um, and, and I, I love what's going on around you, by the way. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's great. I'm, it is. I do love it. Uh, the, um, so here's, but, but here's, um, down these mean streets, you've been, you've been sort of like milking that, if I could say. Oh, <laughs> milking it. <laughs> We're not done yet. We're not but, done yet. But, but, but by doing that, you give a lot of space for lots of different kinds of things happening in it, including um, they've somehow figured out how to write letters to the, to the next, is it Chancellor or? Next superintendent. Superintendent, he, superintendent yeah. of your school. Yep. In which they're district, quoting yeah. Perry Thomas um, to him. Um, so so it's, a, it's, kind of, it's kind of funny how all that genre stuff is getting blended together. But yeah. <laughs> how do you feel about all the possibilities of what, what kids can do and what we can do now and, and where literature fits in that? Does that, do you worry um, about that or not? <laughs> no, okay. I, I'm not. I, I don't know. Should I be? I, I, don't I don't know. I don't know if I should be worried. All I know is that, you know, like, like, like Chad was saying, you have, first they start with the blogging, and then they're the ones giving me, like you said, they, they start with the gaming. They're gamers, and then they try it out. And then now they're designing. Okay. So the kids are blogging. Now they want, now they're getting to the point where they want to blog about stuff that's interesting to them. So my goal in, in the beginning was, how do I get them to start doing posting? Well, they were stuff. writing about the book at first, right? Yeah. Right, and that's where they're mm -hmm. at. But now that they've seen, like, Brian's work, and it's just, like, you know, you were awesome. You post, you put it up there so quickly, um, his logo. Like, when they saw that. We ran a contest, and, and oh, three yes. people entered, mm -hmm. and he won. So, go ahead. <laughs> but he doesn't but it know was that. Wonderful. It there was were a... hundreds. Paul, there were hundreds of oh, yeah. <laughs> <still work>. <laughs> I could say that with a straight face too. Kind of like, oh wait, I just told. Them. No, there are hundreds. Oh great, Paul! Still. I'm gonna send them the link. But, it, but you know what? It's fine. It's it. student designed and it's beautiful. Um, it's great. Yeah. Got yeah. It. yeah. Um, so now they're they're, they're they're giving me it is they they're giving me the ideas for what they want to do. Mm -hmm. um, they're asking permission if they can post on about this or that subject. That's that's where I want I wanted them to go. Is now they feel like they have a valid, an, an authentic voice, people are actually listening to them um, because they're seeing their friends get responded to. And I, they're telling me how they might want to use it now. Now it's getting to that point. Where do I see mm -hmm. the blend keep happening? All it is right now is I'm trying to see how every writing assignment, every writer's notebook assignment, that so every journal that I was having them do, usually, you know, paper and pencil, um, what would this look like now instead on a screen online? How could I um, add some flavor to this by making them post it? Um, you know, what project could I do because it's now something that they can show to the whole world? That, that kind of a, just being able to think like that 
and 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 the kids like I said they have they have tools that they come into my classroom with they I, I I'm really excited they're doing the they're 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 coming up with ideas and guru now I'm gonna have them start posting all the stuff on yes cool. I'm gonna try I, it so, I don't know how it's gonna work are you are you doing the virtual assessment thing again this year or not for or did my, you do that already it's my senior project my exhibition yeah yeah I'm gonna May twenty second. C can you explain that a little bit? Because sure. that's coming up, and and I okay. think that's a it just gets tacked on, and it's getting tacked on again. But I wanted to be sure to ask you to explain what you do around. Okay, folks. So here's my you know twenty second spiel. <laughs> Senior project takes eight months. It feels like they're giving birth. It's a research paper. <laughs> it's about a social equity issue of which there are so many, especially with Oakland. And there's just so many things. Mm -hmm. They choose it. They craft the question. They hone it. They they do a. Um, a uh, ten-page research paper. They have to do field mm -hmm. research this year, and a lot of that. A lot of them use their blogs to be able to do their field research. Their blogs are on WordPress, but I'm converting mm -hmm. to all youth voices. And then um, they present all of that work to an audience of about eight to ten grown-ups uh, and and younger students, and they get assessed. And it's who are sitting in the room? There yes. are uh, eight about eight people, teachers, community members sitting in the room, and then I have a video camera, and then they get videotaped. And that get that video footage gets sent out. Can you say what some of the topics are that your kids are um, working on? Okay, corporal punishment in the Tongan community is it right. an effective way of you know creating good global citi or good citizens? Mm -hmm. uh, we have students of uh, what does ninth grade gang gang recruitment look like among Latino males at our school? Mm -hmm. We have a lot of pro projects that are case study based, so they studied our actual high school and they used um, they did a lot of their field research within the school, which was great because mm -hmm. they got to do digital surveying, stuff like that, but they're sending it to people in the school so it felt semi-safe for them. They knew who they were sending things to. So that's, and they're presenting all that on May 22nd. And I wanted, I need to send out 45 projects that evening online to 45 judges. That'll be interesting. Explain that. Meaning that there are 45 other people that aren't in the room with them physically um, and they're the eyes on the students. They're just another audience member. So it could be alumni that couldn't attend. It could be you, Paul. It could be anybody here on this. Well, hey, hey, look, did you say the 22nd? Yes, I did. That's a Wednesday. <laughs> I know. We own Wednesday, so we're happy to have you come. <laughs> we can do this. <laughs> we'll talk. No, I'm we'll serious. We don't have yeah. anything scheduled for the 22nd. Do you want to try to do Hang out with this, and I'll think. think yeah, let's out? let's talk. Let's talk about how that's gonna look. Yeah, yeah. They do I, it. yeah. There's, we have there's to see that you're not blocked in your school, but but having you oh, yeah. had a good question. Yeah. Well, we get, we'll get you on block for that day. Okay, so let's let's cool. work on that. We'll talk yeah. about it. Thank you. But but how have you done it in the past? Just you, you, <laughs> own, you send it. Own, you send it. You message. send the blog post out to people and ask them to respond to it. Uh, the kids' presentation. Yeah. I, I send the video footage I took of the kids' presentation with its okay. semi-OK -okay audio quality, and they're they're doing their prezies uh, behind them, and then I send that out to every I send that out to whoever is their virtual judge. That virtual judge scores the paper that I send them on email and the oral presentation as they saw it in the video. So, do you need virtual judges? I do. I need so many. Are we allowed to live outside sure. of Oakland? No, you can live in. You just have to live on this planet. Okay. I think <laughs> is is my criteria. So, how would we become a virtual judge for you? That's a great question. Um, <laughs> usually, I rely on who I who I know, people in schools of ed, and and, and people my husband knows because he's a policy guy, and people who, you know, uh, <laughs> are interested that hear about it. So, a lot of it's word of mouth. A lot of it is people. Um, I have all of my alumni on Facebook. That's the only people I have on my Facebook, so I, I send out big Facebook posts. And uh -huh. I recruit them that way. I do okay. a lot of time. Yeah. So find you on Facebook, and we'll find the invitation. I'll post it for sure. Yeah. Okay. Are you on Twitter, Joe? Because I looked for you I'm on not. Twitter. I'm not. Oh my God! I know. I need it's to okay. Let me add it's that okay. to so, and and send me send me some link to that invitation too, and I'll put it up with the show to oh, people. Dude, will you get guys are awesome. It. Yeah. Hey. Well, also, so, Joe. Yeah. I have a question in the chat room. Sure. Somebody wants to know how do you fold this into like your regular class curriculum? Um, because uh, the question. So when when we do we do a lot of reflective writing. We do a lot of brainstorming, and I used to do it in their notebooks. 
And so, oh, you mean which part? The the <laughs> blogging or the senior project? I think the whole of the senior project, something that takes oh, seven, shoot. eight, you know? Oh, yeah. I, I have to do it both. So I run Sorry, a lot of Saturday, a lot, a lot of Saturday school sessions. I, I, uh, I'm on them online a lot um, because I can't contain it in one class. I also teach English Lit, and they, have to, they do six novels a year. So it is in my whole life. So, I, you know, the virtual space has been a very good space for me. We do a lot of texting back and forth of that, that you know, we, we hone research thesis statements uh, via text, you know. So you got to do a lot of outside time. Right. Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. So I, I got to say, I'm, I'm really impressed with what we all do and what the kids all do. <laughs> and like, and the connection is, is really amazing. Um, Monica, do you want to talk a little bit about what we're doing next week? Um, we're planning IDEC with folks next week. I think there's about four or five from the IDEC team that will be on and just sharing about, probably sharing about, you know, some of the things that have been happening in organizing it, um, more, some more details about IDEC. And IDEC is International Democratic Education Conference, Conference or a conversation. Is, yeah, okay. Well, you keep August, changing the last word of everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, August 4th through 8th in, at CU Boulder. Um, and um, and so that and that's happening August fourth through eighth, right? That's correct. Yeah. Can I set up my lab? So and and so um, we welcome everybody back. Um, and as we're closing out here, Joe, do you want to introduce your daughter? Oh, this is Yomara Zia. Wave, say hi. Hi. There she is. Say what? <laughs> Great. Thank you for letting us talk to your mom for a little bit tonight. Okay, cool. Cool. Your mom's awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> so um, we also like to thank here at the end um, Dave Cormier and Jeff Lebo, who set up this whole community around edtechtalk.com um, and um, worldbridges.net. And um, so... We'll talk to you all soon. Thank you for having this very small, wonderful little anti-MOOC. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing with you all. Any rate, thanks for having this conversation. Talk to you all again soon. Bye. Good night. Okay. Good night. Thanks. Bye.